Exactly. Yeah. And the, the, the tips are included also. Yeah, tips are included. Yeah. All food is included. You even have internet included. So you don't have to pay for internet. You have internet all week if you want, which is amazing. And also, if maybe not a lot of people know this, but Virgin is doing a, a status match this year. So if you sell with them one time during 2023, you can, and you have status with another cruise line they can give you status as well. And that gives you, I think, like $100 bar credit whenever you board. You have also priority boarding. You have a ton of benefits in there for having that that status. We actually did the match right now because I don't remember how. I think we did. We did status match to MSI through, I don't remember what. I think it was Hyatt Express that we have now. I think we did that match. And then we saw that since we got gold status with this cruise line, we were also able to get the status yeah. match with Virgin. And we're like, okay, amazing. Loved it. You just heard a clip from Andrea and Carlos from NAO de Dos. Andrea and Carlos create content to help Hispanics and Latinos manage better their finances. From having a better relationship with money, optimizing savings and investing, all the way to travel hacking. They've been in the credit card points game for more than eight years, but it was three years ago when they got hooked with travel hacking and never looked back. They've traveled to France, Spain, Netherlands, Portugal, Disney World, the Florida Keys, and an eight night virgin cruise thanks to travel hacking. In this episode, Andrea, Carlos, and I talk about their mission to teach personal finance in Spanish, how to book a virgin voyages cruise using points, and what the onboard experience is like. Andrea and Carlos transferred Capital One miles to Virgin Voyages to book their cruise, and you can do the same with the Capital One Venture X Rewards credit card. Remember, if you decide to apply for the Capital One Venture X Rewards credit card or any other card, never apply directly through Google. Always use a friend or creator's referral link. And if you're interested in supporting this show when you apply for your next card, check out geobreeztravel.com slash cards. And if you're not sure what card is right for you, I offer free credit card consultations at geobreeztravel.com slash consultations. And we have links to the Venture X card and free consultation form for you in the show notes as well. And now, on with the show. Welcome to the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast, a show for anyone wanting to level up their travel hacking lifestyle. I'm your host, Julia Menez. I'm a travel hacker, coach, speaker, Filipina American ENTJ who loves solid travel gear and using shortcuts on spreadsheets. On this show, I'm on a mission to bring you travel hackers from all walks of life to help you level up your travel hacking game. We dive into credit cards, miles, points, strategy, mindset, and the secrets behind how to travel the world for next to no cost. So let's get hacking. Hello, Andrea. Hello, Carlos. Welcome to the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast. Hello. Hello, hello. Thank you for having us. Of course. I'm so excited to have you guys here today. And we're going to talk about Virgin Voyages Cruises, which I don't think we've talked about on the podcast before. And I'm very excited to do that because so many people are like, what's the best way to use points for cruises? And I think that's one of the best ways if you wanted to use points for cruises. So we're going to talk about that and also how you guys have a super interesting niche where you are creating points and miles content in Spanish for the Spanish speaking community who can get into these credit cards and points and miles because that is a very, very underserved niche. But before we get into all of that, Tell us a little bit about you and your background and how did you guys get into the game of points and miles? So we are both from Venezuela. We moved to the States back in 2010. And when we came into the States, like we knew that we needed to build credit history. Like we knew credit was very important in the U.S. if you wanted to get a house eventually, if you wanted to buy a car and so on. So we knew in advance that the best way to build credit was through a credit card. So we pretty much just opened our first ever credit card, like with Bank of America, and we started just building credit. And it was like very nice to see, you know, like, oh, perfect. We are somebody in the US right now. We're building our credit and stuff. But then the rewards came in like, oh, this specific card has rewards. So if you pay with the card, you get like 1% cashback or 1.5% cashback. And that was unheard of for us because, of course, in Venezuela, you didn't have any like that, anything like that. So um, since the beginning, we started using our credit cards very responsibly. Like we, we, we would always pay them off in full every month. But very quickly, we realized that 
okay, these are actually a tool that we could use. For example, with these great offers like the sign up bonus of $200 or the 0% interest for 15 months. Like that was something that, okay, it could be a little bit dangerous if you don't use it correctly. But if you are responsible with your finances, then they're a great tool. So from there, we started like building rewards and so on. But we didn't know about travel hacking specifically, I think until three or four years ago that I don't know how we got into it specifically. I think I, it was through social media. I, I don't was, know. I was thinking about it. What, what you were saying, I was like, yeah, I remember pretty much everything. We were, we actually were just focused on looking for the 0% interest for the 15, 12 months, 15 months. That was like kind of the hook for us. And the rewards. And the, the rewards, rewards like to, just to change it for a Starbucks card. Oh and my God. Yeah. That like was that. horrible. <laughs> I don't remember when we actually found the, the travel hacking. Yeah. I, I think it was about three to four years ago on social media that we started started seeing that people would use their rewards on the, um, their credit cards, the benefits and everything for travel. But I couldn't see the value. Like how does this give me more value than just cashing my rewards, for example? And then we started digging into it. Like, okay, I mean, I want to understand this. And once like everything clicked, I was like, oh my goodness, like it all makes sense. And from there we got super hooked with it. And I think it's, um, it's funny because I think we, we, every day it's like, we want to do more and more and more. So it's like a hobby that continues growing. But it's pretty fun. That's awesome. How did you decide we're going to become content creators for this as well? Because you guys have a very sizable Instagram and sizable YouTube channel. Is this your full time or are you doing this on the side too? Because for anybody watching on YouTube, you guys have the plaque behind you. For, <laughs> is that for the 100,000? That's for the 100,000, yes. yes. Yeah. How did you decide to be content creators for this? So I think since the very beginning, we were kind of passionate about personal finance in general. Like we realized that not a lot of people, especially Hispanics, because we're Hispanics, really knew the system in the U.S. Like um, people would make a lot of mistakes, like they will pay a ton of interest. They would, you know, maybe open a credit card that was awful for them or get a loan and pay so much interest without that being necessary, not saving money, not investing. So we were like, okay, there is something I suppose, or we suppose that we could change. So in the pandemic, just like you, we were like, okay, if we want to do something, we could do it based or related to personal finance because Carlos... Well, it's funny. He, it's funnier than that. I think you're, you're, yeah. you're telling like the the bio, bi biography. The thing is that, yeah, the it, thing is that funnier. Carlos, he always wanted to have a YouTube channel. Always, always, always. But he didn't know about, you know, the, which specific topic. I knew it had to be with Andrea. That's still like my only own rule and condition that if I ever going to do this, I need to have Andrea on board because if not, I'm not going to do it. So every idea that I pitched to her, she just didn't like it. <laughs> And I, I tried for years, like, Andrea, let's do this. I worked in, in, in TV production. That's why I was so passionate about having uh, a YouTube for me. Uh, that when YouTube started, I, sh the, I think the, the most popular people were talking about how to actually do YouTube. That was like the, the biggest thing. And I, I, I kind of wanted want to do that, something like that with Andrea, but she never like really. Yeah, no, I wasn't really into it. And during the pandemic, we were like, oh, okay, it hit me. Like, if you want to do it, we could do it related to personal finance mm -hmm. and credit cards and, you know, like yeah, because travel hacking, all that related to money specifically, not, spe not just one specific topic, but everything related to money that could help Hispanics in living in the United States. Andrea has always been the, f the finance in the relationship. So... I don't know why it never, it never occurred to me to, to do that way. It was actually her to say, you know what? If we ever going to do that, do this, uh, the, the YouTube, if it's not about uh, finance, I'm not going to do it ever. So stop like asking me, <laughs> you know, this is the only thing I will say. And talking about it, once, once we like landed in, into the topic, then we realized what Andrea said, like, you know, in, in our own journey in the U.S., we have so many hiccups, you know, and so many bad decisions that we made based on not having the right information and not having people to ask to or anything actually. So we really learned on the hard way. So 
once we landed the topic and we see that kind of objective, we took it very seriously. So it went from having just a hobby of, of making YouTube to doing it for, for a really better purpose, you know, mm -hmm. finance, educating U.S. Hispanics. And at this point, really anybody that speaks Spanish, you know, our, our audience, obviously, because of the nature of the language, goes beyond just the U.S. We focus on U.S. because that's where we live. But there's a lot of people from all over the world that see us. And yeah, yeah. And, and, and that can actually they've been um, taking advantage of all the content like they taught they tell us like oh maybe not 100 applies to mexico or colombia or peru but it helps like it opened my eyes like i am making changes on my finances i'm actually looking for credit products that are advantageous for me in my own country instead of you know paying thousands of dollars to the bank because that's the way it is that is amazing And you guys do this full time now? Yeah, since 2022. Congratulations. That's such a huge step. And you guys are making such a difference in the world because there are enough people who are confused by this in English, which is the primary language that all of this is written in. And I cannot even imagine if someone's like, well, English isn't really like my primary language. And I don't understand the transfer partner charts. Like, even when they say, like, oh, just say it in plain English it still doesn't make sense to people. The mm -hmm. fact that you guys are translating this into Spanish and being able to explain how the mysterious world of credit card points works for that community is absolutely incredible. So let's talk a little bit about a cool trip that you guys have gotten to take on Points and Miles. You guys are based out of Miami and tons of great opportunities there, whether it's flying American Airlines, which is a Miami hub, a lot of great different sweet spots flying over to Europe or South America or even Africa. But today we're going to talk about taking a cruise. And Miami obviously is a huge hub for if you want to take any cruises, especially around the Caribbean, Miami is a great one to look into. So tell us about your experience with the Virgin Voyages cruises and How did you decide you wanted to do that redemption and how much did it cost in points? How did you plan this whole thing? Tell us about the entire experience. Okay, starting from the beginning. So as you may know, cruise redemptions are not really good on points and miles. Like it really, most of them, they don't make a lot of sense. So it's just something that a lot of people pass on. But we've seen since 2022 that there have been times that Virgin Voyages they've been marketing their own cruises with Virgin Points. And of course, Virgin is a partner of many credit card programs. So we saw that they were offering one of two options. You can sail from Miami eight nights to the Caribbean in one of their newest cruises for 100,000 points, or you can do seven nights through the mid with to the Mediterranean sailing from Barcelona, Spain, same price, 100,000 points. So we are actually cruise people, like we enjoy cruises. We enjoy traveling in general, but since we live in Miami, cruises are super easy for us. It's like we live 10 minutes from the port, so it's easy. You don't have to plan much. They're a great vacation for us. And we really wanted to try Virgin because we've been hearing that they're very different from other cruise lines. And we're like, oh, let's give it a try. And when we saw that it was 100,000 points for the two of us for eight nights, that was yeah, a crazy. really great value because yeah. this cruise for two people was around $4,000. So we were instantly getting four cents per point in our redemption, which was really good. So the redemption that we did for this cruise was from Capital One. We transferred Capital One points to, or well, miles, Capital One miles to Virgin. They transferred instantly and we were able to book the cruise that very same day. The only thing was that two weeks later, Capital One had these 30% bonus that you could transfer. Yeah, we were like, no. So, you know, we only had to transfer, transfer like 72,000 points if we had waited two weeks. We were like, oh, well, I mean, That sometimes happens, but whatever. But it, regardless, it was a really great redemption in our opinion because not only the value that you get, I mean, you're getting 
eight night vacation for just 100,000 points for two people in a brand new cruise. And the experience was completely different from other cruises we've taken. It was really, really good. Like uh, the vibe, the music, the food, especially also the, I don't know, the decor of the cruise, like you will feel that you are kind of on a boutique hotel rather than on a big cruise ship. So it was, it was really, really nice. Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely, I mean, you have to compare it to the others. So it's, it's not necessarily the, the typical cruise experience. It's more like the luxury hotel, mm -hmm. boutique hotel experience in the in the water, which is fascinating because you it's hard to just to think about and pitching that idea. You you will say, okay, how you gonna how you gonna pull that off? You know, if you are in the ship, it's it's a cruise, so you mm -hmm. wanna have the cruise experience. Well, well, no, they they actually did it. They do it perfectly. Most of it, I think, is in the vibe. It's in the in the decorations, in the hotel. Obviously, the adult um, adults only. Yeah, that's the I think the biggest of the environment makes it better. If you're looking to earn more points and miles, there are usually two main ways to get there. The first one is with credit card sign up bonuses, where you can easily earn tens of thousands of points by putting your expenses on a new credit card. If you're in the market for a new credit card, we offer free credit card consultations and provide you with personalized recommendations based on your particular travel goals, budget, and lifestyle at geobreezetravel.com slash consultations. But there are also a ton of ways to earn points outside of opening more cards. And we have some of my favorite methods like stacking, finding hidden bonus offers, and finding reimbursable spending strategies outlined in my free webinar called You Do Not Need 20 Cards. Check out the free webinar on geobreezetravel.com slash webinar. And we have links to both the free consultation form and the free webinar for you in the show notes. And now, back to the show. When you say it's like a luxury hotel, how big are these rooms? Because normally when you're going on a cruise, if it's a standard room, it's a tiny, tiny little room. Like I've been on two Royal Caribbean cruises and my husband and I were joking that it was like being in New York because we had an interior facing room. I'm like, well, we're above a Michael Kors store. There's a pizza place across the street. We are on top of each other trying to like get things out of suitcases because the room is so small and we can see straight into the next person's cabin across the way. What are the rooms like on Virgin? I think they're designed a little bit better. What I will have to say is that the bathroom is really small. The bathroom itself is super small, but the shower is bigger than other cruises. For example, than Royal Caribbean. I think the shower in Royal Caribbean is so small. Like I'm a small person, so I wouldn't know how like Carlos or a very tall person would fit in there. Like I just don't get it. Yeah. You, They're you, so tiny. You can you can see me, but I'm actually like kind of covered here because I have to be here. <laughs> to level with Andrea, if not, I was- Yeah, but he's pretty tall. So yeah. I don't know how, how he's able to get a shower in there. So the shower is super comfortable and they are so modern that it's completely different. I loved it. So it's a good size. Of course, at the end of the day is, you know, a cabin in a cruise. It's not huge, but the good thing about Virginia Voyage is that most of their cabins are balcony cabins, most of them. So I think just like five or 10% are insider cabins. So you also have the balcony in there and the balcony is super comfortable. You have the hammock that you can chill out in there all day. It's super nice. And I think since the decor is so modern, it doesn't take a lot of space, which I think it's nice and makes the room feel bigger. But yeah, I think for the two of us, I mean, we were there for eight nights yeah. and it felt okay. I don't think if you really think about it i don't think it's necessarily big but it doesn't feel small for sure yeah so i, I think it, it most of it goes for the design i think i, I know there's uh, there are people like not liking the design very much the the stage room i designs. think so yeah i like them but I, I loved it yeah, yeah i think it was right it was right for eight nights what were all the stops that you guys did what was kind of the itinerary of this particular cruise the one that I was offered for the points, it was the first one, it was Puerto Plata in, Repu in Dominican Republic. Then the other day was San Croix. Then it was in Puerto Rico, Puerto Rico, San Juan, Puerto Rico. And the last one was in Bimini on one of their private beach club, which is super nice. I love that they leave that for last because it's like they're saving the best for last for sure. The beach is spectacular it's unbelievable like 
I want, I'm going to share a picture with you so you, you can see that because it's mm-hmm. amazing. Really. We were like, whoa, this is great. And it's private. So you don't have a lot of people. You also have entertainment all day. You have food. I mean, everything is right there for you. It's really just a day to completely decompress, relax, and just chill over there. Yeah, really think, amazing. Uh, I think they, they, they made a good decision doing that last because some of the, for some people at some of the stops, it kind of could get stressful, you know, and what should I do and things like that. Here, there's none of it actually. It's on it. So it's it's very, very stress-free environment for the last day. So I think they, they decided very well. Yeah. That. And the rest of the days, they were just sailing. But you also have so many activities on board. You have uh, so many restaurants. I think that was our favorite part because on other cruises, you have like your main dining room where, where you have dinner every single night and also your typical buffet. And then you have like specialty restaurants if you want to pay extra. In here, everything is included. So you can go to every specialty restaurant and try so many different foods. Like we had sushi the first day. We had poke bowls, which I loved. We're like, oh my God, it's amazing that you can have poke bowls in here. The Italian restaurant was amazing. You have a Korean barbecue restaurant, one um, of experimental food. Everything was so great. Like the food was amazing. And again, I think this goes for the design decisions because every restaurant is completely different from Mm -hmm. not only from the menu and the food, but the whole experience within the restaurant itself. So it it feels that like you're actually traveling from from one city to the other. Once you you go from certain certain parts of the ship to another part, that's why I think it it feels bigger, though it is. Yeah, and the restaurants are huge. So yeah, yeah, it feels so big. And I think we made really, really good use of those 100,000 points for sure. Yeah, I think so far, I think that's the best deal. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> so it was far. really good. Yeah. For a hundred thousand points to get eight nights in basically a hotel, plus a lot of people worry about like, well, do I have enough status to get free breakfast? And mm-hmm. okay, how are we gonna work the whole food thing? And you don't even have to worry about that at all because everybody gets this, even if you have no status with Virgin. Yeah. Exactly. And the, the, the tips are included also. Yeah, tips are included, yeah. all food is included. You even have internet included, so you don't have to pay for internet. You have internet all week if you want, which is amazing. And also, if maybe not a lot of people know this, but Virgin is doing a a status match this year. So if you sell with them one time during 2023. You can, and you have status with another cruise line, they can give you status as well. And that gives you, I think, like $100 bar credit whenever you board. You have also priority boarding. You have a ton of benefits in there for having that that status. We actually did the match right now because I don't remember how. I think we did. We did status match to MSI through, I don't remember what. I think it was Hyatt Experts that we have now. I think we did that match. And then we saw that since we got gold status with this cruise line, we were also able to get the status match with Virgin. And we're like, okay, amazing. Loved it. There's a lot of status match opportunities with cruise lines. I've done that same one with MSC from my Hyatt Globalist. Never took the cruise. I'm not as much of a cruise person. So I always just do this before posting about it on the internet. So people don't come at me if the status match doesn't work. But I have a free voucher for, I think Holland America is another (laughs) one that you could match from. So you can do that. And then get a free cruise or right, and then get your status upgrade on Virgin. Do you know if that'll translate at all to like Virgin flights? If you had some kind of status here, if you were like, well, then I want to fly with them because I like this brand. Do you know if it translates at all that way? No idea. I know that if you have Virgin Atlantic status, you can match the Virgin Voyages, but I don't know if there are like any interchangeable benefits at all. Yeah, that makes sense. So you mentioned you would get a hundred dollar credit at the bar. So drinks are not included with all and those are not included. Yeah. So what they usually have is that if you book, of course, you don't get that if you book with points because you're hitting the cruise for free. Yeah, there are no taxes, no fee. You don't pay a dime to get into the cruise if you pay with points. But if you're paying cash, they usually give you like $300 bar credit or a $600 bar credit if you want. And that's a lot because what I also really liked about this Virgin Voyages cruise is that the drinks are not that expensive. I thought they were going to be way more expensive. We're not big drinkers. So so we will have maybe like a glass of wine or a drink when we were having dinner. And it was like 
eleven dollars, ten dollars. I think Miami is even oh, more expensive. Oh, for sure. In Miami, yeah. it's way more expensive. So and, even and, even if you're planning on drinking every day, you're not gonna spend a lot of money. Yeah, and it's very and they're very make very good drinks. Oh yeah. Also, so it's not. I mean, I would pay even higher for the charge. I hope they don't hear this, but <laughs> they're that good. <laughs> They're really good. Yeah. And the thing that we really like is that it's like in Europe where the check that you get or the price that you see is the price that you pay. Then there is no tax, tip, extra tip and whatever it is on top of it. Like everything is included. If you see that it's $11, that's where you're getting charged. No tax, no tip or whatever. It's $11 and that's it. And you mentioned that when you paid with points, Taxes, tip, and everything was already included. That's unheard of because everything, especially even with like destination resorts, like in the Caribbean, there's always like eighty dollars per night that's tacked on with anything. And the way to get around that is usually people are like, "Oh, we'll just book like a Hyatt hotel, like the Grand Hyatt Baja Mar, or else you have to pay like eighty dollars." And sometimes yeah. it's like fifty per person or something like that. But it's it's just points, and then you're good to go. Zero dollars out of pocket. Like you, if you don't want to, you don't have to pay a penny. Yeah, yeah. It's that good. If you don't drink, then if you, yeah, if you don't drink, I, I, honestly, I think we spent total like one hundred and twenty dollars because the drinks that we had. I don't know if we bought anything. I don't remember. And um, you know, the thing is that also when you are traveling with points, it's like your budget is way more flexible. So, you know, then you are like, oh, I got this trip for free. So you're kind of generous and you tip extra to, to, you know, the people that are attending you, which it's also feels nice. So yeah, like you don't have to tip extra if you don't want to at all. Like that's not expected, but it's always nice. Like, oh, thank you so much. I mean, people that you saw eight days in a row, you know, making your room, you know, serving yeah. you every single day is super nice. So it's like, I mean, if I've already got this for free, of course, I want to at least, you know, do my part. <laughs> yeah, that's super nice. And those stateroom attendants work super hard on a cruise ship. They're away from home for months super at a time. Hard. So yeah, that's a really good idea to tip them extra just for good karma, if nothing else. But also they work, they work really hard. Anything else on the cruise that was noteworthy? I know that Jennifer Lopez is a an investor in Virgin Voyages. I don't know if everyone knows that. Um, apparently, she makes random appearances. I'm guessing she did not on yours, or else that would be the first thing that you. Guys no, no. Mention. Imagine, imagine this. So when we were getting into the cruise, when we were doing the check in and everything, a lady told us like, "Oh, in two weeks, this very same cruise is going to have Jennifer Lopez on board." It's going to be awesome and blah, blah, blah. We go, oh, that's nice. Yeah, it's super cool. And then we heard that she didn't go. Oh. <laughs> yeah, no. But Richard Branson went. So, I mean, I, I think it, it's I think, also cool. Yeah, I think, I mean, I, I, I like her and all that, but I think I would have avoided if if I know someone so big would go to to a cruise. Yeah, because maybe it will be super crowded. Yeah, it will, it will one, be. One thing that I really like about this cruise is that it didn't feel crowded at all. Not at all. Right, right. In fact, many, any, many anyway. times at the beginning, at the first days, we thought we were actually like empty. Left, yeah, left than half of, of capacity. Yeah. Remember, I told you that this, this, this is this is not going to work. There's, yeah. no, there's no people here. <laughs> yeah. But then we realized that it was like at 90% capacity. It's just that I don't know. It's very well designed and you have so many places where you can just go and chill. Like all over the cruise you have on the different floors where you can just sit down, chill, read a book, have a drink, like everywhere, everywhere. Places. So yeah. I think they did it pretty well because you don't see everybody in the very same phase. So they have like jacuzzis all over the pool floor. So is one on the back, one in the front, like just you know, spread spread around. Yeah. Like no, don't conglomerate in one. Yeah, yeah. We, space. Which which does do happen in in, in the other cruises. Yeah, it happens. People a lot. are like, like in the same places, so it, it's very crowded. Yeah. In other cruises here, again, they design it very well, and I just remember that from two to four, I think there's a happy hour, so you oh, do get yeah. free drinks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. But I mean, a one specific bar, a one specific bar. Yeah. In, in, in deck six, deck I think. seven, seven or six. I don't remember. 
So there, it's like a, the Mediterranean bar that they have. So I think it was from 4 to 5. 4 to 4 5 to p.m. 5. You will get free drinks. Yeah, like no strings attached. You just go, ask for your drink and live. Yeah, I mean, and the, you can have as many as you want in an hour. There's no like like, like a big options of, of drinks. But, yeah, you have like four. But they're very good and they're free. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also they're also known because they're always handing out free champagne, which is true. Like on the sailing party, they did. They also gave us a free bottle, two bottles of champagne were left in our room. Like, welcome. We're so glad you're here. Yeah, imagine yeah, for yeah, free, randomly. no charge at all. For just thank you. Hello. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. I hope you love it. I mean, we're so glad you're here. Enjoy. Was this an yeah. inaugural sailing or something? No, 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 no not no. at all. No, that is no. incredible. Yeah, wow, that is good. that is the dream. So you get so much stuff included for this points redemption. This is a really, really good use of points. Is there another route that you guys are looking to do since you've done the eight day one around Miami and the Caribbean? Are there any other Virgin Voyages cruises where you're like, oh, we should do this one too. This looks cool. Yeah, we wanted to do the transatlantic. So from Miami to Barcelona. But that one we paid in cash because we didn't see that it's available on points. But we really liked it. And I think it's actually super affordable for a 14-day cruise. It was like $2,400 for a balcony cabin for 14 days, two people. I'm like, I'm sold. I think it's a super fair value for because I already know what I'm getting. Yeah, exactly. If, it, if it's fair to say, I think we wouldn't pay that you know, with other brands, with other cruises. Yeah, yeah, probably not. But I mean, we liked it so much that we're like, okay, I don't mind just paying for this one. And if there are any other available routes with points, we will definitely consider them. And in the meantime, we'll use our points for some other travel, like no biggie. Does that mean that award availability is a little bit limited with Virgin Voyages? You can't just find any cruise and be like, oh, it's like a hotel room. I'll just like do points instead of cash. That's not how it goes. No, not really. No. They have like uh, flash sales, like, oh, you can book this cruise, this cruise and this cruise for this month with points. And then it disappears. It's so it's sold out. And then you have to wait until it appears again. They done it, I think, three times already since they started. Last time being two months ago, which is when we went. But I assume they're going to do it again. I always check on the Virgin Red app. This is where they actually announce it, the Virgin Red, because they have different apps. You have like the Virgin Atlantic, the Virgin Voyages, the Virgin Red, which shows you all offers that the Virgin Group has, and they show it in there. So they sometimes have like, oh, you can redeem whatever points for a stay in New York or for Virgin Atlantic flights and whatever, and there is where it appears. That is a really, really good hot tip for, that was going to be my next question. I was like, so how do you know? Do you just like follow them <laughs> on social media? Do you just like go to their website every day and be like, what cruises do you have for me today? And it's super convenient for you since you are in Miami where you're just like, I'm not doing anything next week. Let's do that. Exactly. Yeah. Super convenient. So if you live in Miami or near Miami in Florida, I mean, even in the States, like it's so easy to fly within the States. You, I mean, you just catch a plane next day, you're in Miami in a few hours and that's it. Do you know if there's other ports in the US that Virgin Voyages operates out of pretty often? No, I think it's just Miami for now. I think it's Miami and Barcelona and now they're also operating from Greece. And I think they started in Australia too. The thing is that they don't have many ships. I mean, they're, yeah, they're, they're just starting. So yeah. I think it's a matter of time that they introduce more routes, more ships. They only have four ships as yeah. of today. So they're pretty new, pretty, pretty new. Yeah. yeah, that makes sense with the award availability then. If you're like, we got to make some money, we can't have exactly. it all. Exactly. So yeah, download that version Red app and check it daily if you want to jump on this experience which sounds like an incredible use of points and such a good experience too so good recommended 100 percent. so with everything that you learned about virgin voyages and using points to book this and everything else what would you say is your number one piece of advice when it comes to cruising on point obviously look for availability virgin specifically i think is the best use uh, of points. I wouldn't recommend using points for any other cruise line because it's just not a really good value. You can get discounts. You can, as we said, you can even status match 
through other partners and get really good deals. But for points use, I would just go with Virgin for sure when they do have availability. If you see it, just book right away because they're limited space. Obviously, like I don't know how many they allow, but I saw that when we booked, they mentioned they had limited availability and around 10 days later, the offer was gone. It was gone and that was it. And if you are selling with Virgin specifically, our recommendations would be number one, bring something red because you need it for Scarlet Night, oh, yeah. <laughs> which we didn't really know. So they have a huge party that is called Scarlet Night is amazing. And everybody wears something red, like, I don't know, red dress, red shirt, whatever it is, but it's red. And what else will you I say? I think they're, you know, happy hour thing. Many times you learn about this stuff talking with the with the crew. Oh, for sure. So I I, I would say get try to build relationship with with the crew, whichever uh, person you know um, yeah, serves connect you, with them. especially in the in the galley, which is kind of the the how do you say that the the main dining room. The main dining yeah. room. Usually, you 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 go to the same table every time. That's more or less how people behave. So usually the same person goes and and help you out there so talk to that person they usually give you some tips about anything that's happening in the in the in the cruise yeah not only that but there are also like secret events secret shows that only the crew knows about and they let you know if you interact with them so it's uh it's pretty funny so if yeah. you're an introvert you can easily have fun you know on your own but if you're an extrovert and you just like talking with people, like I think you're gonna have a blast because there are like secret shows, there are secret happy hours, there are secret spots. And not a lot of people get to know those. It's just like if you interact with other people, especially with the crew. So another tip in there. I love that advice. Also, just another good karma thing and just like good life practice to interact with service workers and, you know, treat them like actual human beings and not be like the people in that White Lotus show where... Oh my God. <laughs> right. Please like, don't. <laughs> so above all of this because I paid this much for cruise. They're just like interact with the people who are serving you. They're great people. And yeah, it, it apparently really pays off too with all the secret events and stuff. That's such a great incentive for just being a decent human and talking to the service. Completely. Yeah. Completely. Yeah. Yeah. Great tip. And speaking of great tips, can you give a shout out to somebody else on the internet who you would recommend listeners follow for even more points and miles tips? Mm, well, most of the people that we follow are obviously English speaking content creators. We really like Max Mouse and Points. I think that you have them in the podcast before. And uh, if it's in Spanish, he doesn't focus as much on points specifically, but more like travel like very local travel, which I love. And his name is Miguel. His, his Instagram is Latitud Perfecta. It's in Spanish. He's Puerto Rican. He lives here in Florida. He doesn't even know that I'm talking about him right now, but I think he is a great creator. He's a photographer. He's a photograph and he travels, I would say, 11 out of 12 months of the year. And he does it mostly on points. But his ways of traveling are so local and different that it's amazing. You can learn so much from him. He was actually in Japan. He, I think he's still in Japan. And um, his experiences are amazing. So if you are into local experiences in abroad, definitely take a look at him. So great. Perfect. And where can we find you guys on the internet? So where, Carlos? Where can they find us? You can find us at Endeudados, which is... And Deuda and the number two at the end. That's for YouTube. And that's the same for Instagram with underscore at the end. And Deudados underscore for Instagram. TikTok and Deudados again. Yeah, pretty much the same everywhere. I think that's it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and we have that for the show notes for everybody as well. For everybody who doesn't speak Spanish. What does that mean? <laughs> and Deudados. It's actually, it's, it's kind of hard to explain in English. I <laughs> I really thought, I've been thinking about it. It's it's kind of in English you wouldn't understand. Yeah, it, it's, it's difficult like, to. So in the laws, it w we would translate like if you are in debt, but you know it's like a funny name because it ends with the number two, so it's like kind of um of a tricky word. I mean, like in a slang, I don't know that you could say in Spanish. So it's a funny made up word, 
Yeah, it's not necessarily, I mean, the, the idea behind it mm -hmm. in Spanish, it, it goes for the change of cultures. In, in, in North America, we don't really necessarily know or much, much less understand that, which in U.S. is practically your, your, your whole life, you know, is, is based on that. So that culture, that change in culture is very, very important. So that's when we went to, when we, talk, when we thought about the name. But in English, I don't think it, it really, it's really, it, <laughs> it conveys the message. Much, it, yeah. it makes as much sense than in Spanish. <laughs> I Googled it and it kind of was just like, oh, it means like if you're in debt, but it's not that simple, is it? Yeah, it could also mean like when, when you are in debt, not money-wise, but in, in debt with somebody, like, hey, thank you for this, you know, now I'm, I'm in debt with you. Yeah, I'm in the true. Room. So it's, it's a very, it's, it's a play of words. Definitely. A play of words, that's what it is. When you feel indebted to somebody because they did like such a great favor to you. Yeah, we have that in Filipino. It's called utang ng loob. And it is difficult to explain in English. As I was reading the explanation of what it meant in Spanish, I was like, I think that's like utang ng loob. Which <laughs> it, um, it is. doesn't mean anything in English other than like, you are so indebted to someone like from the heart because they were, they provided like some life changing help to you. Like that kind of indebtedness, not like, Oh my God, Fannie Mae, I don't want to pay my student loans anymore. Yeah. Not like that kind of indebted. <laughs> exactly, exactly. 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 And it, it, what, what we love is many people just go straight to that, the definition. And they, when we read the comments, they just think about that definition. So, which is, yeah, good. yeah, like, oh, yeah. you are, you're in debt. Like, are you guys in debt, really? Like, yeah, no, yeah. just the fail words. You know what I mean? It's, and, it's, and it's wider than that. So, some of them just uh, write to us, now I'm in debt to you guys. So thank yeah. you. And things like that. You know, yeah, they, yeah. they use the word, which I love. I love that. Yeah. The big difference of being like, oh my God, I'm in debt versus I'm indebted to something. So completely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for coming on to the show and sharing all of this amazing knowledge about Virgin Voyages, like the sweet spot of using points and miles to do cruises and sharing your entire experience with us. And for anybody who's like, oh, I have some friends who I really want to get into points and miles, but they're more Spanish speakers and like English isn't really their primary language, but they'd love to get into this. Definitely go check out their channel because there is tons of amazing content there on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode of the GeoBreeze Travel Podcast. If any of the cards mentioned in today's episode piqued your interest, please check out the links in the show notes for more information on any of the cards. Also, if you apply for a card using the links on that page, I may receive a commission too, so please and thank you. P.S. I hear the links work better in Internet Explorer or Safari, and sometimes the credit card applications tend to glitch out in Chrome. Additionally, it would mean the world to me if you could subscribe to this podcast, leave a five-star review, and share it with a friend. And if you would like to make even more travel hacking friends, please sign up for the Patreon to access our monthly masterclass hangouts. We dive deep into a particular points program each month, and you'll get to ask all of your travel hacking questions and enjoy being around other people who enjoy points and miles just as much as you and I do. If you would like an invite to the next one, head over to geobreezetravel.com slash hangouts to sign up to be on the invite list. Take care and happy travels.